All right, I just got done taking all my red lines. I took a whole bunch of notes while I was out there. Basically, we have a plan. We're gonna add a wheel mid-span so that we don't have that particular deflection and it gives more support. So in the long run, those will just continue to sag more and more, especially if there's heat, those cross members. Uh, so we're gonna add that middle span so it'll be six wheels. We're also gonna shift away from those L brackets. We've shifted away from them on all the stuff that's going vertical. We are gonna shift away from them and go with the 3D printed brackets here as well. These are the custom brackets that I made that are specifically designed for this particular solution. Uh, we're gonna add these to the base and get rid of the L brackets. You can see I have L brackets built into this. This is much stronger than those L brackets and it stops all changes in position. So I'm gonna head over to 3D printer. We're gonna take the prints off, line them up, and we're gonna get some more brackets coming because these are all spoken for. So let's get to it. I'm gonna head over to the 3D printer, Big Bertha. You can see we have some completed prints on there, including the new spray guides, which you haven't seen yet. Lock this up. Come in and take these off. Nice. Works when things are nice and clean. There we go. And put these here. Get some more going. Here's the new spray guides. Those lined up here two per deck. This is what it's going to look like. I call it a full turtle. This is actually for the potato deck because it has an extra one on the end here. Um, but this is a five position, four position normally. Normally this one wouldn't be here. Custom design, spray distribution guide with specific angles uh, that allow us to get optimum coverage inside. This is tapped. I just didn't have the right tap at the time. So it's just kind of hanging out there, but it's all threads together. It turns into a quick connect, bolts from the bottom. Very, very nice. Excited to see this tested and working. I think I've said it a few times now, but this 3D printer has paid for itself on multiple occasions. This being another one of them, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna save that factory file, and then we're going to open one that I already have, which has Alpha Bravo Charlie's in it. Charlie. And then we'll get rid of that. That, that, and I only need two of those, and I need to drop in an echo, which I have right there. So we're just going through here and we're making sure everything is actually going to work the way it should. That's not going to work. All right, so I'm going to quickly design a new bracket. And we're going to do that. I'm going to come over here. And run here. And run echo. These brackets are cool. I think they're cool. They seem to be working very well so far. They stop movement in all three axes. They won't allow twist. I mean, they're plastic, so you know everything deforms a little bit. I'm not saying they're perfect. They're certainly not as good as metal, but they're good enough for what we need. So now this piece can't rotate, this piece can't rotate, and that piece can't rotate. So all those get to go away slides right on. There it is in the thing. Loading. Let's go get the printer ready. All right, so getting the old stuff off. Get out of there. And then I do a quick alcohol wipe, finding that works really nicely each time. And it smells so good. <laughs> Look, it's centering, or homing, I should say. It's homing. Just 
better view. All right, the total elapsed time since we found these problems to now actually starting the print of a solution is about an hour. Now, if we didn't have this printer or we didn't have 3D printing capabilities, what I'd be doing right now is creating a series of drawings, sending those to a manufacturer, waiting for them to get off their lunch break, deciding that we're a large enough company to actually apply to our request for, and then sometime tomorrow, probably getting a phone call asking me what the problems are with the drawing, what I meant, <clears throat> making sure that I want to spend money with them, and then they'd actually quote it probably by the end of tomorrow. I would then send them additional files that they would request, which would require me to do more CAD work, and then they would actually create the pieces of plastic, 3D printing them themselves probably, and then next week I would receive them. It has been an hour. I did the work I needed to in CAD. I didn't need to create any drawings, though I will eventually have to create drawings that's just required. And now here we are printing the solution. So the Modix <laughs> big 3D printer that I got here is really has paid for itself. Just even if you just add up my time, this thing has paid for itself a few times now. So we've got a nice print going there. We're gonna go out, see how we're doing with the uh, emptying of the base and the reservoir there. And then we'll start adding the wheels and the brackets that I already have printed for another purpose. Uh, we'll get those going for this one. Time to go get the base. So one of the things I messed up on, being quite honest, is I didn't do the analysis for deflection before I assembled everything and I should have. I might have fenced my licenses out, uh, but I should have done it by hand. And honestly, that's just because I haven't done it in a long time. So it would take me a while to go remember how to do everything. But here's what we got to do. <clears throat> so we have deflection here and that's because our corner braces suck. Obviously, we're dealing with that problem on the 3D printer right now. We're going to be removing these completely. These are the uh, support members that allowed it to connect. Kind of the idea was the same as the stainless steel, that you'd be able to just set these in, they connect, <clears throat> and you move on. However, uh, in this solution, uh, first of all, the ones I really wanted were really expensive. And we need a lot of them, and everything that costs a lot has to be questioned because we need to reduce costs as much as possible. So. I got these ones as a substitute and they work fine. I'm just not happy with how everything's lining up and you really have to be perfect in your hole drilling. I mean perfect. Otherwise you have to create a bigger hole in order to deal with uh, not being perfect and that leads to slop which then ruins the whole reason why they're there because they're there to keep everything rigid and they're not. So they're going to go. And then we're going to add <clears throat> more bracing to the inside here. This one's clearly rotating, that needs to be fixed. And then we'll add our custom brackets in all four corners. Uh, four of them are already printed, so we can do these top ones and remove these inside brackets. And then we're also gonna be moving the Raspberry Pi, the uh, real-time clock, and the relay are all gonna flip to the backside and we're actually gonna have them be fully accessible from the backside here. And we'll create a cover that goes over that. Somehow, some way, uh, we'll make that all happen. So we've got to remove this panel, we've got to put in the new corner brackets, and we've got to put a wheel at mid-span. So we'll measure, and you can see the deflection here, that's going to go away as soon as we put those wheels in. Now, the weight that's being transferred to this comes in, the load comes in from all four corners, and then it's distributed mostly directly down, but it will pull a little bit here, which is very rigid because the plastics are on the end which this would be rigid too if the plastic was on, but we have to test without the plastics on because someone could take you know, the plastic off when they're doing maintenance and then you'd have a big problem if you didn't test that. So we're gonna get this all tested up. We're gonna get the additional brackets put on, get everything tightened up, get the wheel put in, the new brackets on. We've gotta wait, unfortunately, four hours for the new corner. We have to wait four hours instead of a week you got to put that in perspective. So instead of sitting here going do, 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 do for a week, be sitting here for four hours working on some of these things that need to be done anyway. So remove extra brackets. We'll get the wheels in and then we'll take this plate off back here and start working back there on what needs to be done. Let's do it. These are cool to remove.
So I got a whole bunch of those. <laughs> oh man, product development, I tell you, has its ups, it has its downs. Let's get these panels off. So now we're going to be taking off these brackets here and we'll be putting on our new brackets. So I will need to print two more of these. I'll tell myself this so I don't forget. Take this off. And one of the things I like about these other new brackets as well is they are easier to install and will require less machining. The good news is we're reducing part count. The bad news is we've had to create custom parts. Custom parts tend to be more expensive than your traditional parts, but they're custom. They're exactly what you need. And once you get tooling in place, oops, that needs to be drilled first. Once you get tooling in place, they're gonna be cost competitive with off the shelf parts. but they tend to usually be more expensive still.